Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. Uh, a couple of wines in front of me from the Connoisseur Winery in Chile. Now, Connoisseur's been going since about 1993. It's an offshoot of uh, Conchi Toro, but it's run quite separately. I mean, every so often they, they do do uh, a little bit of collaboration. Uh, but uh, what, what, when, uh, when Connoisseur set up, um, one of the things that they did is they bought an estate uh, in a lovely place with a lovely name, Chimbarongo, and it came with a vineyard um, that uh, was already 25 year old plantings of Pinot Noir. I don't know whether there are older Pinot Noir plantings in, in Chile, but there can't be too many that are, are that age. And since then, uh, they've, been, they've developed something of a reputation for their Pinot. And I think they, they, well, they claim to be the largest producer of Pinot Noir in the world. Anyone top six million bottles of vintage? Well, if, please write in and uh, prove them and me wrong. Uh, so I tried a range of their, their, their wines yesterday with Adolfo Hurtado, who's their chief winemaker and who calls me a Simon. Uh, uh, and uh, I've known him for quite a long time. He used to work at a, a winery called uh, Vina La Rosa. Uh, but he's been he's been at Connoisseur really pretty much from uh, well certainly mid 90s onwards. And uh, Pinot's a bit of a passion of his. So uh, they had uh, there. I think we tried six Pinots yesterday. There was a sparkling. Uh, there's one called Bicicleta. Then there's a Reserva Especial. Uh, then they had. Uh, uh, another one that was like a um, well, they, they, it's a part, it's a, a series that they're just introducing called Block Series, Block Series Pinot Noir, and I think there's Block Series of uh, of other varietals. Um, but then a level above that, uh, twenty barrels or twenty barrels, as uh, as Adolfo says. Uh, once upon a time, there were only twenty barrels. It was just a selection of. They went through the winery and said, "That's a good barrel. That's a good barrel." And twenty barrels in total. Uh, now there's probably slightly more than that. Um, uh, once upon a time that was their top wine but since uh, about 2002 uh, this has been their top wine, Osseo. Uh, and so I've got the Osseo uh, 2012 here and it's got one of those that you could probably uh, hide a small hamster up the punt uh, and I tried it yesterday, this is the same bottle that I end up leaving the tasting with so I thought I would try it with you uh, dear viewers, let's try it. What I think um, makes um, Connoisseur stand out, um, maybe there are others who are following suit, but uh, sometimes I stick my nose into P uh, Chilean Pinot Noir and Chilean uh, other varieties as well, and there's this smell of reduction. Talking to Adolfo yesterday, he said one of the uh, main things that uh, sets them apart is they've got open top fermenters, so there's a lot of air that gets into the fermentation. And he says maybe yes, it just take the doesn't diminish the uh, the richness and roundness and uh, freshness of the fruit, but it adds extra layers in the process. So when I stick my nose in there, uh, I smell this uh, quite juicy, uh, voluptuous, warm, velvety uh, black cherry with a little bit of kirsch in there. It smells exotic and confident, rather than uh, some chilling pinots. They're all elbows, and they're 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 intense and fruity. But almost, uh, you, you want to say, can you turn that little bit of the wine down and amplify some other bits of it? Here, uh, it's got it's nicely rounded. It's got it's still got fresh fruit, uh, but it's got fresh uh, rounded confidence. And um, tasting all through the pinots, it wasn't as they, that they got louder as you went up the uh, up the price range. It was just they got more layers to them. So here it feels like it's going to be a, a rich but multi-layered wine that's got that's never gone on to the overripeness, but it's got and it's got freshness with it, but it's got other layers too. And there's a rounded, confident, juicy, ripe raspberry cherries. There's a bit of the red fruit, there's a bit of the black fruit in there. So it's the red berries, raspberry and, and uh, uh, raspberry and strawberry. Uh, and then on the darker side, maybe that's where the black cherry uh, edge kicks in. Uh, tasting it yesterday, uh, it was showing a little bit oakier than it is now. Um, 24 hours later, it's looking suppler. Um, it's looking uh, not, I, mean, it, it, I brought it out of a slightly cool cellar. And at this temperature, it's, it's lovely and fresh. And I've got a feeling as it warms up, you're going to get some of those more juicy, voluptuous, velvety uh, characters coming through. Again, what's nice, freshness of the finish, lovely texture. I'm going to have another swig. 
delicious. You'll notice my spittoon has not been uh, called into uh, action too much with that particular wine. Uh, now, once upon a time, this was the top, well, for a long time, this was the top wine in the connoisseur portfolio. Uh, I was asking Adolfo whether there were any plans for a white equivalent, because they, I think that the highest they do is uh, 20 barrels. I think they do a Chardonnay and maybe a Sauvignon, maybe a Viognier. He was also saying about Viognier. They've got 155, 150, 105 hectares of Viognier, which makes them, again, probably one of the largest producers of that in the world uh, and he said yeah no plans at the moment for an upper tier white uh, just because he, he doesn't reckon he, 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 he'd probably be able to make it but he doesn't reckon uh, there's a market for it yet however uh, they have recently introduced uh, Cabernet um, and uh, uh, so the, the Silencio was introduced in 2010 vintage um, and uh, I've got a, a early bottle of the 2011. It's had uh, just over two years in oak and it's all from uh, Maipo. Uh, and but not one particular Maipo vineyard. Sometimes you see people who are doing the, these uh, upper tier wines, they are a single block. But this is, as with the idea of Osseo, it's a selection of what ends up being the best barrels. Um, so there's a little bit from, uh, oh, it's all high Maipo, but there's a little bit from Pirke, uh, there's a little bit from, uh, um, oh, I can't remember all the, Puente, Puente Alto, is it? I can't, I can't remember all the, uh, all, all the precise vineyards, but, um, this was looking pretty good yesterday. Let's see how it's looking today. So this is 2011, uh, weighing at 13.5% alcohol. So not um, not a big wine uh, in Chilean terms. Um, uh, let's. See. It was. It looked great yesterday. So what's really nice about it um, is again, it's not got that Chilean reduction. Um, Adolfo said, "I don't. I hate mint. I hate eucalyptus in my wines." Uh, and um, I, there's not so much, a, 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 non really of that, that eucalyptus edge, but what there is when you stick your nose in there, and I think that is a character that's going to get stronger with time. Uh, there's this little bit of a, what I call greenness, and I think Cabernet always needs that little, ever so slight leafy character uh, to keep it all fresh and uh, to keep it, um, yeah, uh, to, to keep you coming back and, and um, enjoying its vibrancy. There's that. There's some of the dusty warmth that you get in Chile and Cabernet and that uh, sometimes you think, okay, this is slightly Bordeaux-esque. But for me, there's that warm dustiness in the in the good Cabernets that comes through and uh, reminds you that it's not from Bordeaux. So here, there's this uh, plummy, uh, you'd almost swear it was, if, if it were in Bordeaux, you'd probably put it on right bank Merlot dominated rather than uh, left bank Cabernet Sauvignon dominated because there is this warm plumminess to the fruit. Uh, but there's this leafy freshness that um, think, you makes you think, oh yeah, that's Cabernet. And it's really very grown up wine that. Um, grown up in that it's not trying to bash you around the head with power, but it's trying to silkily caress you and uh, um, has a very nice caressing feel it, it has too. Um, so there's the juiciness, there's this plummy fruit, uh, there's the freshness, that leafy character comes through. And there's this very fine tannic structure. Uh, it's, a st it's at a stage now where you think, wow, that's delicious. But I think those fine tannins are going to keep it uh, going for quite a long time. Uh, they've only done the first vintage in 2010, so uh, they're not quite sure uh, how it's going to age. But I would put my money on that for a good 10 years. And um, I, I like it in comparison with... Uh, they, some some uh, wine producers uh, in Chile do these tastings where they pit their wines against... Uh, against wines from uh, uh, other parts of the world and uh, say, oh, it stacks up against the first growths. Uh, and uh, I, I have not been to one of them. The people I know in England who've been to one of them say the Chilean ones are pretty easy to spot. However, I reckon if you had that in there, um, you'd be going, I'm not so sure about this. Maybe that dusty warmth um, puts you in mind of somewhere that's outside Bordeaux. But uh, it reminds me of things like Ridge uh, in California. There's this excellent uh, concentration of fruit, but freshness and this seam of tannin that's uh, uh, that's just uh, really just uh, acting as a framework, holding it all together, uh, keeping it uh, fresh, confident, and uh, very tasty. I'm going to have another swig. Well, the spittoon didn't get troubled in that particular tasting. Uh, what's so lovely about it is this fresh confidence, um, and uh, it's uh, you very happily put that in a lineup of uh, great wines and uh, 
I, I gather one of Chile's top wine writers has just said that this is the top Cabernet in Chile, and uh, it's a struggle to think of, uh, of, of ones that, uh, that are up there with it. Um, I, I think it's an excellent wine. Ingossio's uh, excellent too. Uh, my only dilemma now is I've got these two bottles, uh, which, much as I love my friends, family and neighbours, I don't want to give away to them. So uh, I think I'll have the Osseo tonight and the Silencio tomorrow, uh, and I will enjoy them. So uh, well done, Adolfo. Uh, two great wines. Uh, thank you for letting me take them away from the tasting yesterday. Uh, hopefully see you soon, and for the rest of you viewers, hopefully see you soon. Bye.